Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So uh, this week we'll continue with our um, book review with the um, all-time best-selling book, uh, Millionaire Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller. In this episode, we'll continue with the myth understandings that people have. So last week we discussed the three personal myth understandings. Today we'll explore the second category of myth, myth of myth understandings. It's about the way you look at investing. So they call it the Phantom Five, the myth, the five myth understandings about the way you look at investing. To begin with, Gary noticed a lot of these myth, these myths and misunderstanding about investing, come from people who have never invested successfully or built well or built financial wealth. Then Gary questions very naturally, isn't it interesting that so many of us accept and believe the words? Of others without first verifying that they have earned the rights to teach us, right? And you keep hearing cautionary advice: investing is complicated, hard to understand, risky, incomprehensible, and inaccessible. These words circulate quietly and are taken on faith, and for the most part, they go unnoticed. That's the reason this book they call them the Phantom Five. They're like the ghosts. So let's dive deep into them. Investing myth number one: investing is complicated. Well, the truth is, investing is as complicated as you make it. Almost like anything, taken as a whole, can appear very complicated than it really is. Take your vehicle, your car, as an example. You don't need to be. You don't need to be a car mechanics. Or you understand everything internal of of a car in order to drive it, right? All you need to know are the very basic rules of the road and how to drive. And investing is no different. The caveat is you need to step back and identify the aspects that matter the most in terms of investing. And I really like what Warren Buffett put: "You don't need to be a rocket scientist in the realm of investing. It's not a game." Where a guy with 160 IQ beats the guy with 130 IQ, isn't it? Then let's talk about investing myths too. The best investments require knowledge most people don't have. This is something that you keep hearing about people when when people do talk about investing, right? Well, the truth is, your best investments will always be in areas you can or already do understand. One of the greatest lessons to learn investing is, investing in what you don't know isn't investing at all. It's like shooting in the dark, and you'll need very good luck to hit anything worthwhile. So instead of doing that, what we should do and could do is pick an area in real estate that interests you a lot and commit yourself to becoming an expert in it over time. Well, a good example is the legendary investor Warren Buffett. Yes, we'll talk about him again. We'll constantly be talking about him because he's really a legend and a model. What, how he treated the tech boom in the late 1990s? Well, he frankly admitted that he just didn't understand this industry, and without knowledge, he would be essentially gambling. So he opted himself out in this great tech boom. That's actually the attitude that every one of us who aims to be a great investor needs to have, right? And then let's continue. So this book talks about investing myth three. Number three is investing is risky. I'll lose my money. Well, a lot of people keep talking about that and keep constantly hearing about that, right? Well, the truth is, shared in this book, investing by definition is not risky. Well, it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Well,、um, this book and Gary shares about it. By definition, investment doesn't have the word risk in it. Well, I did a、uh, quick Google look up, and the definition of invest is actually is I can read it to you, which is expend money with expectation of achieving a profit or material result by putting it into financial schemes, shares, or property. Well, you actually don't see、uh, the word risk. It doesn't appear in the above definition, does it? Well, I accept that Gary is not playing a word game with us, but the truth is, risk is something that people bring to the concept of investing. 
However, great investors don't ignore risks. Instead, they follow sound principles and models. This way, they take risk out of the game. Well, this reminds me that we talked about something in a very similar way in previous episodes. What's that? Think about it. We talked about great investors take luck out of the game, right? So same as luck, great investors take what? Take risk out of the game as well by following sound principles and proven models. Interesting, isn't it? So investing in real estate isn't about taking risks. It's about having sound criteria, the patience to find the right opportunity, and a willingness to take the correct action quickly. Great investors are always minimizing their risks while maximizing their returns. Investing can never be absolutely risk-free, but it doesn't have to be risky. Well, then let's talk about investing myth number four, which you can often hear about, which is successful investors are always able to time the market. Well, the truth is, in successful investing, the timing finds you. I totally, absolutely 100% agree with what Gary said in this book. So timing is everything. Timing is not only important, it is critical to investment success. First, let's accept the fact that the economy is cyclical. So are the markets. The great buying and selling opportunities are created by the ebb and flow of the cycles. The most often seen misconception about timing is, it's about being reactive to opportunity. You sit, watch, and act when the opportunity arises. What Gary points out, and he advocates, is the idea about timing, which is, it's about being active all the time. You have to be in the game. Well, one thing to know, though, is being active and being engaged doesn't mean that you are always buying and selling. What he means is that you are, you are consistently searching with your criteria, watchful for the moment when the opportunity services. This is what, what he means, what Gary means when he said the truth is, timing finds you. Now let's dive into the last investing myth, investing myth number five. All the good investments are taken. Oh, you keep hearing that, right? Well, the truth is every market in every time has its share of good investments. Gary shared with us that there are two market forces at work. That's something completely new to me as well. Well, it's not completely new, but it's just something that he summarizes and put in front of you, which is economic ones and personal ones. And they are always at work, always influencing the market. Economic forces are very obvious. Examples include population shifts, job growth, interest rates go up and go down, etc. The second one, personal forces, that is the one that is often overlooked, which could be positive, such as family growth, relocation, marriage, could be negative as well, such, uh, such as divorce, death, or debt. All of these forces are there forever. Because the society is a living community and these forces are constantly be creating opportunities. And opportunities are always there in every market and in every time. Some opportunities are the result of the obvious economic forces, while others are the result of local and incidental personal forces. And you're never too late. Because personal forces are always at work, which means these opportunities are constantly being generated. So in closing, Gary, in closing of this chapter, Gary shared a very powerful principle, which is the law of momentum, compounding your success. Well, everything big starts small. So step past short-term thinking and look at the larger impl implications of small investments. Then Gary shared with us the very classic story of the value of a penny doubled every day for 30 days in a row. Guess how much that's going to end up with? That is a total of $10.7 million. That is the power of compound interest. Well, at the very end of the, this chapter, Gary encourages us to put aside our misunderstandings, turn the page, and read further into this book, 
which we will continue, and which we will dive into the core and the meat of this book in the following episodes. So if you like our um, YouTube tutorials, um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. More videos are on the way. Thank you very much. See you guys in the following episodes.